Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a quick recording talking about uh, cell fracture in geometry nodes. Uh, there are certain reasons this cell fracture node has to be made in 4.2 and uh, you can make this before. The algorithm is known but there will be many practical issues that it's not working well. So we will talk about it today. So let's start. So here we are in Blender. Uh, let's firstly talk about the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. And then we are going to talk about the major principle and how to build that potentially. So let's start with the preset cell fracture. And by default, it already contains a cube inside. This is in case you do not know how to use this preset. And it's not very obvious about the cuts unless you zoom in. So we're going to make that more obvious. We're going to use an exploded view. This is to separate different islands. The name is even taken from Houdini, which is doing basically the same thing. And it's very useful in this case to debug or to actually visualize how your polygons are being separated. Okay. So you can change the seeds, this is procedural, and it's kind of very fast. The reason I have to discuss this in 4.2 uh, is because starting from 4.2, we have a new solver of mesh pooling. And in the past, it was the exact mode. And you may find that this exact very familiar because uh, this is exactly the same as the exact in our boolean modifier. And uh, that exact is very slow. And sometimes it's not really exact or accurate as its name suggests because of uh, the characteristic of its algorithm. We will uh, talk about its performance difference, but uh, basically in our geometry nodes 4.2, we started to have this float solver, which is actually the faster solver, which is faster and potentially more usable in our cases. Okay, that's why we are going to do a more practical one of cell fracture in 4.2. And basically for this preset, the usage is very simple that you put a, any kind of custom mesh or design the mesh. You have a UV sphere. You can have a cone. You can have a cylinder. And then of course you can have a cube. And you can also stretch this cube. And you get mostly kind of uh, evenly distributed cuts. In the demonstration, I made uh, some mistake in the implementation, but I fixed them. So now it potentially works better. If it doesn't, just change the seeds. Hopefully it solves. No one will really care details. And it also works for Suzanne Head if you want to. But the Suzanne Head is a very tricky model. I do not uh, really like it because it's actually a separated model. I hope uh, Blender can have more testing geometry, just like Houdini. Houdini like, has like a six or seven test geometry, which is very nice, but Blender does not have that many. So anyway, let's try if we take this Suzanne hat and plug that in, and then we hide this Suzanne hat. Uh, it's working. There are some bugs, but you can change the seeds, then it will solve. So trying to change the seeds, it will be fine. Otherwise, it's essentially just uh, some traditional thing of uh, Boolean modifier that you have to solidify and so on. Okay. Basically, this is the idea. Uh, let's uh, start with uh, an experiment first, because you always want to test 
from simple setup. So let's just start with a queue. I'm going to get a grid. Just for convenience, I'm going to take a parenting node, which is a preset, so that I can actually control that with the controller, or which is an empty. So I take mesh pooling. We have float solver as a default. We have uh, the exact solver. If I plug this grid into the float solver, let's increase the size of it. It's not a very obvious about the cut we have, or maybe we do not have the cut. So let's try with the exploded view. You can see there is no separation of geometry, which means there is no cut being made. Uh, even if I try to rotate that, actually I rotate that, then immediately you can find that there is a cut, but it's not ex really expected. This is because that, uh, how can I make, uh, yeah, plane axis is fine. Uh, this is because uh, a common issue when you are working with Boolean is that a grid does not have, have a thickness. So one easy way to deal with that is that you use a cube to cut to give it a thickness. So let's try to decrease the z-axis. Then you have this result, okay? This is a correct cut despite the fact that this 0 0.1 is too large. But uh, if you decrease that to a small amount, you will see this cut is becoming invisible. So now we know the results of this uh, float solver. And let's try with the exact solver. Uh, can I try with the grid with the exact solver? And we have the same issue. Hmm. I thought that we don't have the same issue. Can we try to hold out self intersection? Hmm. Seems not working. I don't know why. Uh, let's try with the cube. And we basically get the same results. And if we compare these two operations, you can see basically 10 times difference. And this is really just a cube yet. There is nothing special. If I subdivide that more, you will find the issue is more problematic. Let's try. Maybe times 10, 10. So you can see this uh, is still about 10 times, actually more than 10 times. That's why we do not want to do actual cell fractures before 4.2, because this boolean is so problematic. So now we finish the basic testings of performance. We decided to use this uh, float solver for faster and more um, accurate performance, whatever. And uh, the basic principle of this entire operation is quite uh, simple. Basically, we're just uh, use the repeat zone to keep cutting this cube. So we need to select one island to cut, and then we again select one of the islands to cut, and again we select one island to cut, again select one island to cut. Very simple and boring. So we start with a cube. We start with a repeat zone, and uh, we need to separate the geometry. And we finally join these two geometry back after we cut one of them. But uh, what's the criteria of uh, cutting? We need to cut in one of the islands, and each time we are going to cut a different island. So you need a loop index, which is essentially just an add node. If you do not want you to use the presets, I'm going to just use a math add node and add. So essentially, just uh, every time you plus one, so that you start with a zero, you plus one, and after the repeat, you feed back. So you start with a one, and you plus one, you get a two, you feed back for every iterations. We can use this loop index as a random ID. So we take a random value. I'm going to use an integer. And then we need to know the actual Mesh island count. So we take statistics. We take an mesh island count. 
and the index is always starting from zero. So we subtract one from the count so that this random value can be comparable with the index. And we are going to change the ID for this random value node. So now if this island index equals to this random value, we select them. So this is what we are getting. And for this selected island, we are going to do a mesh booting. And the other one will left impact. So this is the basic idea. And the, the next thing we are going to do is basically to decide where we uh, uh, place this cube as the color. So here, let's uh, firstly take this uh, cube to mesh boolean. I'm going to keep this parenting relationship first for demonstration purposes. Uh, if by if without this parenting, you can see there is a horizontal line because we do not input the rotation yet. So basically, there are several things we need to decide. One is the scale of this color. Two the rotation of this color so that we can actually rotate the color and the three is the location of the color we can decide where to actually cut with a different kind of rotation okay so these three components are very important and uh, to determine the scale we are going to use a bounding box bounding box is basically getting a diagonal value from um, upper right to the left button and so on. So I think the distance between minimum and the maximum will basically be larger than any axis you can achieve for this island. So we'll combine XYZ and I can remove this parenting. And this z-axis will be the thickness we apply. So now we make sure the scale is large enough to cut. If you aren't uh, very confident, we can actually multiply some further values to make that 1.5 or something like that. Just to make sure that if this, uh, if the entire distance is not enough, for example, if we just multiply 0.5, then you can see there is no cut being generated. So we finish the scale. We need to finish the rotation. We take a random rotation. So I take a transform. And if you take a random node, you find you do not have rotation anywhere. This is because internally the rotation is actually using quaternion value. So quaternion to rotation. Actually, these two are the same. It's just uh, being displaced in an Euler way. So that it's easy for people to manipulate. But you can actually see this rotation in the spreadsheet as a uh, quaternion value, which contains four uh, columns. Uh, so that's why building a random rotation is not very straightforward. So here we're just like, using this Euler vector rotation instead for the moment. I'm going to type a negative pi in minimum and a positive pi in maximum. We take rotation. And uh, you have a red link because of the socket shape are not the same. To solve this problem, it's very easy. We just uh, put a different ID so that we solve it. So that uh, this random value will not be dependent on the ID on the geometry. And we solved it. And 
you can see there is a random rotation cut somewhere. And uh, at last, we need to decide where we translate this cut. It's basically the same. And we duplicated this random value. But we need to place that within the bounding box. So we take the minimum and take the maximum of bounding box. We translate it. And uh, we need to change the seed and so on and so forth to make sure these random values are not colliding or having any kind of coincidence. And uh, for this kind of purposes, I made a loop index node. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's called uh, index C. So you input one value, and you have different seeds to control them. And uh, this can be used for various places because you have different value generations as well. So you have a seed of one, two, three, and you can just uh, change the seed so that you can get different values. Otherwise, you can do things manually by your own. Just uh, making sure the different seed should be different. And I talked about how to generate ID or seed using white noise and so on. Anyway, that's not really matter. So once we finish that, it's basically finished. Uh, you just increase the amount of iterations. Then you can see all these kind of different cuts. If you are not satisfied with that, you just increase the, you just change the seed. So you get a different result. And basically that's it. If there's any errors, usually there are errors coming from Boolean or other things, or some common mistakes that uh, your mesh is not closed, or your mesh does not have any thickness, and so on. But basically this is yet. Actually this isn't really complicated, uh, and the over sign is known for a very long time. The only thing it uh, happens Uh, it makes it so important today is this uh, mesh boolean operator from float and exact. So here we can actually visualize this uh, group output. That's the performance here is 44 milliseconds. If you make that into exact, it becomes 696 milliseconds, uh, which is too slow and not practical at all. Of course, you can bake it. But if I change any seed, then should I bake that again? So it's not really applicable. Let's try with the float, which is, on, which is only 43 milliseconds in total. So this is very nice in 4.2. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.